Hey guys, if you have watched the trailer of Jurassic World Dominion, then you would have been a little bit shocked at the size of one big dinosaur that came out at the end. It was seen in the ending scenes of the trailer and Dr. Ian Malcolm stated, Do they always have to go bigger? So in this clip, we see a huge Giganotosaurus, probably cloned from the same one seen in the prologue. As to how they got the samples, well, that will also be explained in detail in this video. But the main topic is to assess the probable size of the Giganotosaurus that will appear in the movie. So subscribe if you haven't already. And now let's get to it. Now let's start with the Giganotosaurus from real life. And to start with the topic, let's dive into the past. This species is a part of a genus of theropod dinosaur that lived in what is now Argentina. During the early Cenomanian age of the late Cretaceous period, approximately 99.6 to 97 million years ago. The Giganotosaurus was one of the largest known terrestrial carnivores, but the exact size has been hard to determine due to the incompleteness of the remains found so far. Estimates for the most complete specimen range from a length of 12 to 13 meters or 39 to 43 feet long, a skull of 1.5 to 1.8 meters or 5 to 6 feet in length, and a weight of 4.2 to 13.8 tons. So it would be somewhere in the same size range as the largest specimen of a T-Rex, which is Sue, and she is 12 meters or 40 feet long, and was 4 meters or 13 feet tall at the hips. Now let's shift to the Giganotosaurus from the prologue. Well, although the Giganotosaurus was seen fighting a feathered T-Rex in the prologue, this shouldn't have really happened or have been possible since they existed 30 million years apart. If this Giganotosaurus species did exist, then it would have not been the same as the ones in the fossil records. It would have been a further evolved species of the Giganotosaurus lineage, and it could probably be true since the past is full of secrets and mysteries, and we know only less than 1% of the dinos that ever existed, never mind the ones that coexisted in the same time frame. So it could be possible that there is yet another apex predator larger than the T-Rex during the same timeline, but we haven't discovered yet. Just like the apex predators, the tigers, the Bengal tigers, and the Asiatic lions in the Indian subcontinent coexisting together. So regarding the Giganotosaurus versus Tyrannosaurus rex fight, this shouldn't have really taken place, but with our presumption of an undiscovered species, it might have been a common occurrence in the prehistoric times if two large carnivores did inhabit the same niche. So the fight was a quick one. We hope that there will be an extended scene of the battle in the movie so as to give the chance for the T-Rex to prove itself and not look like a weakling. Well, in the battle, the Giganotosaurus completely overpowered the Rex in a measly 20-second duel and it killed it by snapping its neck. But this did serve as the genesis of the entire modern timeline where the mosquito carrying the Rex's DNA was discovered and Jurassic Park was created. So going to the main topic at hand, the Giganotosaurus size estimation. In the prologue, we see both the Giga and the T-Rex having a similar body size, but the former was a bit bigger and a bit bulkier and taller than the feathered Rex, who although big wasn't up to the mark in terms of size. The Jaguar's head towered over the Rex when they were intimidating each other, and when they were face to face, we could clearly see that the Jaguar's head was slightly longer than the Rex's, even though it was um, less bulkier. It was longer, more heavily armored with crocodilian skin, as scales as well, and small spikes on its back and a heavier built tail. So when all of this put together, we can clearly say that the prehistoric Jaguar was indeed larger than the Rex that it fought, but since we don't really know the maturity of the T-Rex there, we can't really come to a size estimation. So what about the trailer's Giganotosaurus size? Well, we can definitely say now that they have extracted the DNA and cloned one specimen after Fallen Kingdom. So let's go back again to the words of Ian Malcolm. Do they always have to go bigger? By that statement and the fact that Malcolm had seen both Rexy and the two big T-Rexes of Isla Sauna in the second movie, he would know what he was talking about. The Jaguar will definitely be bigger than the T-Rex even in modern times. And it was confirmed to be the biggest carnosaur ever, so its length would definitely be close to 50 feet and a height of 18 to 20 feet tall, given the fact that Rexy is 43 feet long and 16 feet tall. 
But is it really bigger than the Spinosaurus? Is it the biggest ever? Well, in both reveals of these two dinosaurs, there were comments on them being bigger than the T-Rex. If you remember, in Jurassic Park 3, Alan Grant stated that the roar that came from something bigger than a T-Rex Or at least it was, uh, it sounds bigger, and it indeed was. The Spinosaurus was around 49 feet long and was close to 20 feet tall due to its sail on its back. But the Jagger, on the other hand, doesn't have a sail. And again, since Ian Malcolm said, Do they always have to go bigger? It means that either this new entry would at least be as big as the Spino and a fully grown Indominus Rex, or possibly be even bigger since yet again, this would be of a yet undiscovered species that existed alongside the T-Rex 30 million years after the holotype specimen of the real-life Jigger was dated too. So now another question is, how did they get the samples? As with the majority of the extinct creatures brought back to life by cloning, the dinosaurs at least, the DNA samples were extracted from mosquitoes stuck in fossilized resin called amber. The same mosquito that bit the dead T-Rex in the prologue could have flown to the Jagger on the same day and bit it and suck its blood and then get itself stuck in amber. In its stomach content would be the DNA of two giant predatory dinosaurs. It wouldn't have been a recent discovery since uh, InGen as of 2014 did have the DNA sequence of the Giganotosaurus and used it alongside with that of the T-Rex, the raptors and other modern species to give rise to the hybrid that is the Indominus Rex. Now the last question, why was it created? With the events of Fallen Kingdom and Dr. Henry Wu's apparent outside the company policy act of creating hybrids, he might have alongside other members of InGen abandoned the company and worked for a rival group that was confirmed to appear in Dominion, and that is Biosyn, yet another genetics company hell-bent on creating dinos. A bigger dinosaur with more teeth would have fetched a lot of money, and with rumors that they would have some sort of mind control for using the creatures as bioweapons, then the Jagonotosaurus would be a tank in the arsenal of this antagonistic group. The Jagger is a mystery to us all. And yes, alongside the Atrociraptors and even the Quetzalcoatlus, these dinos would be prized possession of private military contractors and even the US military, and so that they would be used as weapons and the people behind it would have plausible deniability. But that's just my take. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and with that we come to the end of it so do hit that like button for support and subscribe as well to be a part of the MindQ family but most of all smash that bell icon for regular updates on new videos right here on this channel. Till the next one, take care fam.